today's video, we're going to be looking at simple interest calculations. Previously, or in the previous video, we looked at uh, simple interest calculations. This is a very similar topic um, with some added definitions. So the difference between the amount A and the principal P, which we've discussed previously in our first simple interest video, it has two interpretations. It can be seen as the interest I on the principal, and when added to the principal, it gives the amount A. Or alternatively, we're going to view it in a second manner, namely, we're going to see it as the discount D on the amount A, which when subtracted from A gives P. So for these simple discount calculations, we're actually going to use the following notation, very much similar to the, um, the simple interest calculations. Again, we still have the principal P, here we've got this new concept called the interest, or sorry, the discount D, sort of equivalent to the interest I. We've still got the amount A. We've still got our time T. But now what we're going to have this concept, or we're going to conceptualize this as the discount D instead of the interest rate R. So for simplicity or for, for simple discount loans, the amount of discount, which again denoted day by D, is given by the product of the amount, the discount rate D, and the length of time T. Or mathematically, we can simply write D is equal to A times D times T. This has a very similar feel, again, to our previous um, formula that we were using, which was saying that I, the interest, is equal to P times R times T. Now, instead, we're going to express this, this concept or this discount as in terms of this uh, accumul or the amount A. So the principal P is given by the difference between the amount A and the discount rate D. So remember, A was equal to P plus I. Now what we have is in fact P is equal to A minus D, or equivalently, we could just say P plus D is equal to A, where again, D and I are effectively exchangeable. The only difference is it's a matter of how we express this discount. I interest is expressed in terms of P, D is in expressed in terms of A. So going forward in this equation, so if we replace D now in terms of A, we now get A minus A D T. Or if we factor out the A, this gives us A times one minus D T. So in this expression uh, that we've got above here, P is called the present value of A, or alternatively, we can say it's the discounted value of A. The factor one minus DT, as you can see here in this equation, is called the discount factor at simple discount. And we can say that the process of calculating P from A is called discounting at simple interest. Again, some terminology there. Now, if we actually rearrange this equation here, P is equal to A times one minus DT, we can actually make A the subject and we can arrive at a new equation simply stating A is equal to P over one minus DT. That's different from our equation, which we originally had, which was something like A is equal to P times one plus RT um, for simple interest. So here, um, in this equation here, we've got a slightly different interpretation. 
A is called the future value of P or the accumulated value of P. The discount factor or the factor, I shouldn't say the discount factor now, I should actually call it the, the factor, simply the factor, one minus DT to the power of negative one, that's like, that's the fraction here, is called an accumulation factor. It's actually, if you take the reciprocal of it, it's no longer a discount factor, it's actually an accumulation factor at simple interest. And the process of calculating A from P is called accumulation at simple discount. Count. Let's take a look at a bit of an example. So let's suppose that uh, a person must repay $600 in eight months time from a lender who charges 12% per annum discount rate. What is the discount and how much does the borrower receive now? So again, going for our first bit of a solution. Here what we're told is the person will repay 600 in eight months time. So that's some time in the future. So that's really telling us it's actually an amount A. In, you know, A is going to be what is repaid in the future. We're interested in what we need to, uh, or here we can see the second part of the question is what we receive now, that would be the equivalent. That's the P, the principal. But we do know from the question that A, the amount is 600. We're told here that the discount rate is 12%. So I've written D equals 12%. And the time, remember this is 12% per annum. Because we're dealing in a per annum rate measure of discount, then our time, which is eight months, needs to be in the form of years. So here we've got eight over 12, not simply eight. Time is not equal to eight, it's equal to eight over 12 or equivalently two thirds of a year. So the discount rate, we're going to use our formula here, is A times D times T. Substitute in our values that we have, $600. 12% or 0.12 times two thirds. Multiplying that all out, we get a total of $48. So that answers part one. And then how much will the borrower receive now? The borrower receives this amount here at P equals A times one minus DT using the formula. Again, we could substitute in these values here, 600 for A, one, one this is still in the equation, 12% for D and two thirds for T. And that gives us a value of $552. Alternatively, we could have simply just said that would be equal to 600 minus 48. In other words, A minus D. Um, but I thought I wanted to use those equations, both of those equations that we derived on the previous slide, just as an example. Let's have a look at a second example. So calculate the present value of 2,400 due in one year at a simple interest rate of 20% per annum and at a simple discount rate of 20% per annum. Okay, so in this example, we have an amount A, again, because this is the future amount, 2,400, that's due in one year. So this is our value of A. We have a discount rate of, we're told, 20%, an interest rate of 20%, and a time T equals one year. So if we were to calculate the present value using the simple interest formula, we'd use P is equal to A over one plus RT. Substituting in our values, we've got 2,400 for A, we've got 0 0.2, 20% for R, and we've got one for T. And this gives us a value of $2,000, straightforward. This is something we've covered before in um, our previous video. However, now let's calculate our present value if we were to use a simple discount rate of 
So here at simple discount, it's a different formula. We've got P is equal to A times one minus DT. This gives us a value, again, substituting out our values, we've got 2,400 for A, we've got 0 0.2 for D, 20%, and one for T. Notice that this 20% is different, this 20% for D is not the same as the 20% we used for R. Do note that. And actually, we get a different result, which might might be surprising to you, might not be surprising to you. But what we find is when we use a discount rate of 20% versus an interest rate of 20%, what we're finding is that the principal amount is actually less under a discount, uh, a simple discount calculation, if we were to assume that the discount rate and the interest rate were the same. Um, now, what, what's interesting on the on the flip side of this, what we could say is if we started with $1,920, we get to $2,400 in a year using simple discount. But it, for us to get to the same amount of money, $2,400, we'd actually need $2,000 at the beginning of the year under a simple interest rate. And this turns out to be the case in general, where if you have the discount rate equal to the interest rate um, to accumulate, you accumulate faster. I suppose you could also say you discount faster um, under the discount rate. So before we go on, what we're going to do, or before we go on to the next, uh, the next video, we've also got to find, oh, I want to find a relationship between D and R. In other words, if I have R, how can I find D? And if I have D, how can I find R? So we can do this in the following way. Note, we have these two equations that we already know. A is equal to P times one plus RT. And we also have this further equation which says P is equal to A times one minus DT. And what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to substitute equation two or the second equation here into the first equation. So you can see here I've got A equals P one plus RT. Here I've put A, but instead of P, I've actually substituted in the second equation, A one minus DT. Here is your P here. Now, the next step, is to one, cancel both sides with respect to A. You can divide both sides with respect to A, sorry. And then we can actually take one minus D, we can divide both sides by one minus D, and that leaves us with one over one minus DT on the left hand side, and we're just left with one plus RT on the right hand side. Now, the second part of this is we could just simply take one, we could subtract one from both sides. This leaves us with RT on one side and one over one minus DT minus one on the other. Now, if we were to put this minus one over the same fraction, over the same denominator, one minus DT, that actually becomes minus one minus DT over the fraction, because again, if you were to take uh, minus one minus dt over the denominator, you'd get back to negative one. Then, of course, this my, my, uh, one minus one gives you nothing, but then you've got a negative and a negative dt, which gives you a positive dt. And then finally, if we divide both sides by t, because again, we're trying to make r the subject, we get r is equal to d over one minus dt, which is an interesting, well, I suppose it's an interesting fact that you might, or an interesting fact that you might use if you have to convert between r and d. Um, and we're gonna do something very similar between, um, or we're gonna find now an expression for d in terms of r. So, Similarly, if again we start with that same equation that we began with, a is equal to a1 minus dt. In fact, we're going to go to the next step here, which is saying 
1 over 1 minus dt or equivalently we could actually say 1 minus dt is equal to 1 over 1 plus r actually is going to be more appropriate for us um, this gives of course if we were to take dt to the right hand side well, dt to the right hand side and then rearrange the equation I suppose but let's say we put dt to the other side and then we subtracted 1 over 1 plus rt on the other side hence why we have this 1 minus uh, 1 plus rt on this side like this dt then if we were to again write this 1 at the beginning as uh, put it under the same numerator what we'd have is a 1 plus rt over 1 plus rt which gets us back to the 1 but we want it under that uh, denominator then what we find is that this one at the front cancels with this one at the behind which gives left, le leaves us with rt and finally again similar in the last situation we're going to divide both sides by t and so we're left with d is equal to one, uh, r over one plus rt so let's finally just take a look at a quick example of how we can use this formula a bank discounts a sum which is due in two years at a discount rate of 10% per annum. What is the equivalent interest rate? Well, in this example, what we've been told is that the discount rate is 10%. We're told that it's due in two years time. So time is equal to two years. And so we can simply uh, calculate our equivalent interest rate using one of the formulas we derived before, which is R is equal to D over 1 minus DT, which is equal to, again, substituting our values, 10% or 0 0.1 for D, uh, and 2 for T, 2 for T. And then that comes out to be 0 0.125 or equivalently in percentage notation, 12.5%. What's interesting here, and I'll pause and end the video here, but before I do, I just want to point out that it seems that the relationship between R and D, in other words, the interest rate and the discount rate, is time dependent. So depending on the amount of time that you have between when the amount is borrowed and when the amount is paid back, that affects the conversion between your discount rate and interest rate. What we might find in later videos is that this time-dependent conversion is true for simple interest, but is it true for all types of interest, namely compound interest? We'll find out. Thank you for watching.